during this first set of normal push-ups, we're starting off in a solid plank position, straight arm plank. So my lower back is flat. And what I'm doing is I'm holding a posterior pelvic tilt. An anterior pelvic tilt would be when you stick your butt out like this. And if you tuck it in, creating a flat lower back, squeezing your glutes, then that's a posterior pelvic tilt. So we're holding that, and then we're starting off with our shoulders fully protracted, pushed away from each other. We're not starting off relaxed like this, but like this. Kind of a rounded upper back. And this is really important. So when you go down, we're retracting our shoulders, pinching them together. And then when we push up, push all the way back into that full shoulder protraction. So we're pushing our arms, our shoulders all the way out, out and away. And remember the whole time we're squeezing our abs, we're squeezing our glutes, we're tucking our, what we're doing is we're tilting our pelvis backwards. And that's a posterior pelvic tilt, so we're holding that. It should look like this when you're starting. And I like to go really deep. And if you can't go past right here, then that's fine. But you'll gradually be able to get deeper and deeper while you stretch your shoulders and while you build more strength. The second push-up that we're doing is on one single parallette, and it's a close grip. So one hand is over the other hand, and in this way, you can keep your feet together to make it harder, but in this version that we're doing, this routine, I'm starting in a straddle position. That's where our legs are spread far apart. Give us a little bit of better balance so we can focus on the strength, the push strength. And again, we're starting with that shoulder protraction, and we're still holding that posterior pelvic tilt. So we're gonna do four with your left hand in front of your right hand. Or you can start off with your right hand in front of your left hand. And then we're gonna switch to make it even. Switch the hands, grip, and then we're gonna do four that way. Third, we're going to do hollow body push-ups. And the only difference between this and the normal push-ups is that we're holding the shoulder protraction throughout the entire movement. So rather than going down and retracting your shoulders and pinching them together, we're trying to hold them as protracted as possible. And fourth, we're going to do pike push-ups, but we're going to do them the way that I like to do them, and you may have not seen them this way. So normal pike push-ups, you probably see them going straight down over the shoulders like this. And our shoulder blades are kind of relaxed that way. But in this version, we're going to aim for that hollow body. So we're holding that shoulder protraction throughout the pike push-up and we're going down at a deeper angle. We're trying to get our shoulders in front of our wrist, fairly in front of our wrist. So instead of aligned like this and retracting, we're gonna hold this shoulder protraction, that rounded upper back, and we're gonna go down at a fairly deep angle, moving our shoulders in front of our wrists. And that is gonna make the pike push up fairly harder, much harder. And we can make that a little bit easier by standing in a straddle position, just so we can balance a little bit better. But we still wanna hold that shoulder protraction. If you can't hold that shoulder protraction, then just try as much as possible. And if, if you have to retract a little bit, just to execute the exercise like this, then you can start that way. Just make sure when you get to the top that you're pushing out into full shoulder protraction. And you'll gradually gain, gain more strength to be able to do it during your hollow body push-ups. And then last, we're going to finish off with a frog stand hold on the parallettes while holding the shoulder protraction. So rather than doing your frog stand with a relaxed upper back, hold that shoulder protraction. 
and you'll really start feeling the difference in your shoulders from holding a relaxed shoulder position and holding the shoulder protraction. You'll really notice the difference right here in pushing your shoulders out. And the reason why the shoulder protraction is so important in all these exercises is because when I'm going into a bent arm handstand press, it doesn't matter where I'm starting from. Let's say I'm starting from the frog position and I'm trying to do frog to handstand. If I just stay relaxed right here, then I push up. I don't have nearly as much support or muscles activated in my upper back and around my shoulders. And when I protract them and I'm really tensing those muscles, it puts me in a better position to be able to push myself, press myself up into the handstand. I'll have much more support up here. And that's where a lot of the effort and work is coming from. So let's try that press with shoulders protracted and trying to hold that protraction while I'm pressing. I had much more support. And even on the way back down, I start slowly pushing into that protraction. And I just feel like I have more stability and more control that way. And it's a lot easier for me to press up with that shoulder protraction, with those muscles activated, than just being relaxed up here. See, that way takes much more effort and I feel like I'm using more of my lower back to push up rather than the muscles up here. So that's why we're building the shoulder protraction strength for our bent arm press. So there you have it, it's going to be five exercises. Push-ups, single parallel push-ups, hollow body push-ups, straddle pike push-ups while holding the hollow body position, the protracted shoulders, and then we're gonna end it with a frog stand hold. As for the exact numbers, well this may vary according to your strength. I'm going to perform the entire routine myself and I'm going to do eight push-ups followed by eight single parallel bar push-ups, followed by six hollow body push-ups, followed by six straddle pike push-ups, and then I'm going to end it with a 15 to 30 second frog stand hold. I'm only gonna rest anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute in between exercises. I'm keeping the rest time fairly short, maybe even shorter than that, but only rest up to a minute between exercises or shorter if you can. After I perform every exercise, I'll rest from two to three minutes, and then I'll perform the entire set again. And I'm going to do this three times. I'm only going to film the first set so that this video doesn't drag on. And just, just remember to challenge yourself. This, this routine is challenging, and you really gotta push yourself. All right, so let's do this.
process, before you start any strength training, I recommend spending about 30 minutes skill training, just attempting the skill if you're already there yet. So let's say you're learning a frog stand through handstand. That's one variation of the bent arm handstand press. Start off attempting that as close as you can. Even if you're not quite there yet, even if you're only like right here, then attempt that and take longer rest times in between each attempt. Spend about 30 minutes doing that first and then rest a good at least three minutes, three to five minutes to regain your strength, get a good rest and then perform the strength training routine. Okay.